next, our next lovely, lovely storyteller is a consummate actress. She has been on all kinds of television shows, like, for instance, NCIS. That's, you know, that's a good one. And The New Girl, do you, have you guys seen that? That's good, right? And on Nickelodeon, and did you, have you guys seen HBO's Togetherness? Have you seen that? That's such a good show, she's on that. So she has done a lot of TV, and she is creating her own storytelling show at the Groundlings. She used to be part of the Sunday show there. Yeah, and that's the first one is tomorrow, tomorrow night. So if you guys want to go to the Groundlings tomorrow night and see what she creates, I mean, I wish I could go. I wish I'd known. It sounds amazing. So let's welcome to the stage the very beautiful and can you say debonair about a woman? Yeah. She's kind of debonair as a woman. Uh, Roxana Ortega. <laughs> she debonair? Yeah. I feel like I needed to walk in debonairly. <laughs> Debonairly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to go on safari. It was like my soul came in, just longing for it. So when my friend Jenny said she had no one to hike Mount Kilimanjaro with, I said, great, I'll hike Mount Cal Kilimanjaro with you. First we'll do your dream, and then we'll do my dream of going on safari. It seemed like a, an even trade. Uh, now, I knew nothing about Mount Kilimanjaro. She actually had to tell me it was in Africa. Um, and I'm not a hiker, per se, <laughs> but uh, I uh, love a good view, and I'm willing to walk for it. That's how I put it. So I said, you know, um, sure, it's going to be a lot of walking, but the views are going to be just amazing. Uh, she gave me a lot of books, but I didn't want to read too much. I really wanted to be surprised, <laughs> right? Uh, so I just perused, just perused. And uh, I stumbled across a very interesting fact about Mount Kilimanjaro. It could kill you. It could kill you. People died every year. We were going to be walking in extreme altitude, I did not know that, for seven days, uh, reaching over 19,000 feet. And this could cause something called cerebral edema, whose symptoms included two words, brain leak. Brain leak. Now, I didn't know what my brain was going to be leaking, but I knew I did not want that to happen. Um, see, I'm adventurous, but I'm also extremely fearful. Um, <laughs> it's a weird combination. My, uh, my therapist told me I run anxious. <laughs> when I go downstairs, like walk down a staircase, I picture my dead body at the bottom of the staircase. It's just what my brain does. So my brain did not need to think of itself leaking on the top of the mountain. Like That was the last thing it needed. Um, th th then, then the gear list came. That didn't help. It was seven pages of essential gear, it was titled, with words like uh, gaiters, neoprene sleeve, balclava. I grew up in California. Like I didn't, know, I didn't know what these things were, let alone how to pronounce them, but I knew if I did not get them, I would probably die. Um, so I bought them all, and I hadn't planned on doing any training, because I read in one of those books, you can't train for altitude, and I really clung to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so freaked out two weeks before I started hiking Runyon Canyon and doing panicked squats at the gym. I was the girl on the airplane with the compression socks, just like, you know, walking up and down the aisles and stretching my quads by the bathroom during the flight. When we got to the base of Kilimanjaro, there I was. I was in Tanzania, Africa. But we met our three guides, seven hikers, and 30 porters that would be helping us get up this mountain. They immediately checked my uh, heart rate and my oxygen levels. So it felt very serious. First two nights on the mountain, I did not sleep at all. Jenny. <laughs> slithered into her little sleeping bag and passed out immediately. I put on all of my clothes, my balclava, all of the things, and I just lay there, petrified. I was scared of the wind. I was scared of the cold. I was scared of that brain leak. And I told my guides, like, oh, how am I going to know when my brain is leaking? <laughs> <laughs> and my guide was like, you won't know. We will know. And I was like, that did not help. 
see, I, I kept telling them all my fears, like, I can't sleep. You are tired, so you will sleep. I was like, don't you have insomnia in Africa? <laughs> like, that, that, no, I can't sleep. I finally slept night three, but it was really hard. Like, we were walking seven-hour days, and you'd fall if you did not have your pole technique down. I did not have my pole technique down. <laughs> Um, one day, one of the guides said, who here is afraid of heights? And I was like, I am. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of falling from heights. I'm afraid of everything to do with heights. And he's like, tomorrow you will walk behind me. And it wasn't so much as walking as scaling a wall with all four of my limbs. And I kept looking over at Jenny like, damn, your dream is dangerous. <laughs> the night of the summit attempt, <laughs> they should really rephrase that, but the night of the summit attempt they woke us up at 12.30 in the morning in the pitch black to start the icy incline for six hours straight. And they said, it's too cold and too high to stop. It's not safe. So we were going six hours straight. And people started really struggling, really freaking out. Uh, about an hour in, someone from our group said, um, hold on. And then she just threw up in the wind. And then we kept going. Then Jenny yelled, wait, I have to have diarrhea, just yelled it on the mountain, <laughs> went behind a rock, had altitude diarrhea, and then we all just kept going. And uh, a little while later, two in our group were like, it's not worth it, and they just bailed <laughs> thousands of dollars down the drain. They're like, bye. And a lot of people from other groups were just turning around, and they were leaving. They were going down the mountain. Uh, we passed one woman who was sitting in like the icy, um, it wasn't snowing, the icy ice. And her eyes were all bugged out and she was like <laughs> breathing really shallowly. Like uh, it reminded me the end of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom when they rip out that person's heart in the human sacrifice. <laughs> like it was frightening. Um, I was doing surprisingly well. <laughs> Must have been those compression socks. But I was... I was doing surprisingly well. I mean, I kept repeating my name and address over and over again in my <laughs> just to make sure I hadn't sprung a leak. <laughs> but I felt focused and strong and determined. And I kept saying, like, what are you even doing? This isn't your dream. This is Jenny's dream. Like, you didn't even want to be here. You wanted to be on safari in a Jeep where they don't even allow you to walk. <laughs> and here I was, like, walking up this mountain, like trying to reach this summit. But it really, it wasn't about that for me at that point. I was, I felt like I was walking toward every fear I had ever had. I felt like I was facing my own fears, facing my own nature, and facing that thing. I try so hard to reconcile my own mortality and I kept thinking about my father, who had died just the year before. And I knew he, did, he wouldn't want me to stop walking. And I kept thinking about my life and what I wanted it to be about. And I knew I didn't want to be that girl that turned around on the mountain. At 6.30 in the morning, we made it to the summit. And we cried, we hugged, and I said, I need to pee! And I did so behind a tiny rock in front of many international strangers. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like I had reached a higher place inside of myself. I could have died, but I didn't. And that made my safari even sweeter. I sat in that Jeep, sat in that Jeep <laughs> and watch the giraffes just saunter across the horizon and it filled me. But if I'm honest, that damn mountain filled me more because it continues to be my teacher. It teaches me the power of my mind, the strength of my will, and how facing the thing that I feared actually fed me more than the thing I had always longed for. Thank you so much.